Welcome to another video from Robotic Mower Services. This is another video in our series of videos about no loop signal errors. We've already showed you how to check the transformer, the low voltage cable, the difference in the, uh, the different meaning in the different colors of the LED there in your charging station. Uh, we showed you videos on how to check the resistance in your boundary wire, how to check the signal coming from the boundary wire into your mower. So now it's time to move on to some other stuff here to help you guys figure out these errors when they do pop up. This situation here, we got the small test area. You can see we used the uh, orange boundary wire, so you can see there's a wire the whole way around here. We have a solid green LED in our charging station. Let me move the camera here, I'll show you. Sir. Solid green, and we have a no loop signal error on our mower. So because you got solid green, boundary wire, everything with the charging station should be working good, right? But the mower is not picking it up. So if you go in there to check your signal values, of course it's going to be at zero because it's saying there's no loop signal. Now, if you just got your mower back from, uh, from the dealer from having it serviced, they might have connected it or paired it to their charging station. Or if you just replaced your charging station circuit board, you have to go in and pair the charging station back up to the mower so that they're working on the same frequency. Just as a refresher to everybody, I know a lot of you guys know how to do this, but for anybody that doesn't, when you have a situation like this where you have a no-loop signal error on your mower, but you have a solid green LED on your charging station indicating that everything should be working fine with the charging station, first thing you should do, because it's completely free to do, going to cost you no money, you're not going to have to buy any parts or anything to try this, is go into the mower's menu, go into security, your menu, padlock icon for security, hit OK, and we're going to enter our pin code, and in here in security we want advanced, and we're going to do new loop signal. Now it's going to ask you if you want to change the loop signal. Before I do that, let me give you a little bit of advice here. Don't have the mower the whole way into the charging station before you do this. Have it sitting uh, about an inch or so out from the charging station before you go any further. So, yes, we want to change the loop signal. I'm going to select yes, hit OK. Now it tells you to put the mower into the charging station. So now you want to listen for that audible tone right there. So now you know that the mower did make contact. All of that is good. And now this will think and think and think trying to pair the mower up with the charging station. I will warn you, the longer this goes, the longer it has to think, the less likely it is for it to pair up to the charging station. And in this case, it's taking quite a while, so the odds are that it's not gonna work out for us. But this is always the first thing to try, as I said, because this costs you no money, this costs you no parts to try this. If it works, hey, great, your mower's up and running. If not, then we move on to the next step. And you can see here, connection not changed. When it does change, obviously you will get a message that says connection changed. Since it says not changed, you could try it again if you want. Like I said, it's free to do, no parts involved or anything like that. But there's really good odds that if it doesn't connect the first time, it's not gonna connect the second or third time when you go to try it. So we need to figure out what's going on. What's causing the issue here? Why does the charging station say, I'm good to go, my boundary wires are good to go, but the mower's saying no. A lot of people will jump to, well, it's gotta be the mower. Loop signal board or a main board or something like that, just not working. Because the charging station says it's good. Well, let's look into the charging station first because that's gonna be easier for you guys at home to do without the, uh, without the aid or help of a dealer. You know, if you go swapping a main board into this thing right away, obviously the dealer's going to have to update that, and it's going to be more expensive than anything you could have inside of the charging station that could be causing a problem. All right, now you know from the other videos that we showed you that you're going to have 28 volts coming from your transformer into your charging station. It's going to come through the low voltage cable, into the back, through the harness, into the charging station circuit board. But then what happens to that voltage? Well, that voltage actually comes out and goes through your boundary wire. That's what gives the signal to the mower, that voltage going through the boundary wire. So in this case here, you got a solid green LED. So obviously you've got power coming in. Your circuit board must be doing something because that LED is lit up. 
but we're not getting a signal coming into the mower, or at least the mower doesn't sense one. So next thing to do would be to check to make sure that our boundary wire actually has the power coming through it or enough power coming through it from the charging station circuit board. And the way you do that is on the back where you connect your boundary wire to the charging station tower, you just want to grab a multimeter and check to see if you've got somewhere close to that 28 volts coming out of the charging station. All right, to test our voltage, we're going to get a multimeter and you want to have it set to higher than the value of the voltage you're looking for. So in this case, this one has 20 volts DC. We want to go to 200 because we're looking to get at least 28 volts coming out of here, right? So got that set up right. Got that there so you guys can see that. And I'll just tell you from experience here, I know this already, but you'll find out that your, your right boundary tab, that is the one that's going to be the negative and the left is the positive. If you connect them the wrong way, your reading will be negative rather than positive. So you'll still get a reading and you'll notice to switch it around because you'll see the negative there. But all you're going to do is stick your, your meter probe on the left boundary wire tab and then on the right one. And you should see somewhere around your 28 volts coming out. You can see here we've got zero coming out. That is a problem. You think, well, maybe it's the multimeter or maybe it's these, these probes or something like that. Well, you can check your, your guide wire tabs, except you don't want to see the 28 volts there. You're going to see roughly four and a half volts on them. So here we are at guide two, four and a half volts. So we know that our multimeter is working, our probes are working, and our charging station board is doing something because there's voltage coming out through the guide wires. There we go. Guide one, four and a half. Guide three, 4.4. So we're close. But yeah, between uh, left and right, where we should have 28 volts, we've got zero volts. So either our charging station board is the problem or our wiring harness is the problem. Highly doubt the wiring harness for the charging station tower is the problem, but we're going to be taking this apart to check the uh, charging station board anyway. So won't hurt to check that that harness in there and see what we got going on with it. Now one other thing I will point out here before I do swap this charging station board around that uh, can throw people off is the fact that when you put the mower in here and you push it in there to charge, it's going to charge. In almost every case that we've seen this in, the power is still coming through all the other circuits like I showed you with the guide wires, but you can see here, you know, we've got the solid green LED, but our boundary wires aren't connected. And if you check where your, your mower plugs in at, you can see right there, we've got, we've got the voltage coming through from the transformer through the charging station board and coming out here where the mower plug in. So you'll see that on the mower. And remember in the video, when I pushed it in here to change the, the loop signal, you got that tone, that beep, that chirp. So if there was no power coming through here, then you wouldn't get that and that would be a good indication that there's something going wrong inside the charging station that there's not enough voltage coming through here so we knew we had voltage there we have a solid green light you know we had all the indications that everything was working properly but when we checked for the voltage back there where the boundary wires connect at we had no voltage and even with them disconnected we still got the solid green light so open this up here i already took the two screws out of it and we'll disconnect our wires here so we can move the cap out of the way. And you can see that everything is plugged in right inside here. And we have our boundary wires disconnected, solid green LED. Nothing, nothing, no trickery going on there, nothing happening. Um, this was a charging station board that was actually in a charging station that um, was in an area that had a lot of thunderstorms come through and there was a circuit breaker on the circuit that the transformer for the charging station was plugged into. That circuit breaker tripped. When they flipped it back on, the transformer was still good. We had a solid green light in the charging station, but no loop signal error. And of course, you know, when you can't get the mower to connect, like I showed you in the video, that was the first thing we did was was check the uh, the voltage coming out of the back, and that's when we realized, hey, we've got one of these errors that we see 
every once in a great while. So wanted to share this with you guys. Now I'm going to go and put another charging station board in here and show you what everything should be doing when it is working properly. All right, so I put another charging station board in this charging station and we got a flashing blue light. So that's good, right? Because it's not solid green and we have the boundary wires disconnected. So this circuit board's doing what it should. It's saying, hey, you don't have a loop signal here. So if we connect these boundary wires on the left and on the right, it should go to solid green, right? Nope, still flashing blue. Well, what could it be? Well, as you know from our other videos that we showed you that you'd wanna check your boundary wire check to see if you have a break or if you have high resistance because typically that's what the flashing blue light means, right? And a lot of people will jump to that right away. Oh, flashing blue, I've got a break somewhere. Well, if you follow through our videos, then you see this flashing blue light. The easiest way to determine whether it's a boundary wire problem or something in the charging station is to measure your resistance in your boundary wire. So we'll set this to measure resistance. Let that get that to sit up there somewhere so you guys can see this pretty good. All right, so we'll take this wire off of here. Bear with me. Okay, we got one wire there, and now our second one. Sorry, this was such a process. Um, there, whoop, 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 almost at it. Don't have enough hands to do this. So there we go. We've got, ah, I just had it. We have got under one ohm of resistance in this short little loop around here. So that boundary wire is good. There's not a problem with that boundary wire. There's no cut, not high enough resistance to make that flashing blue light trip. So our problem is not in our boundary wire. It's somewhere within the charging system or the charging station. So what could it be? Well, <laughs> you probably guessed it by now because of what we're talking about in this video. So we're gonna go back to what I just showed you here. We're gonna set this to check the voltage coming out, going through our, our boundary wire. And we should have that 28 volts, right? So put this on here and put this over here on this side on our negative and let me just go around this way so it's easier for you guys to see. So if we do that and that, almost there, 20 volts. We've got 20.4 volts here when we should have 28. So just like with our, just like with our resistance in our boundary wire, if we have too much resistance, it's going to say, hey, this is no good. And if we don't have enough voltage, it's going to say, uh, no good, we don't have enough power here to send a signal. Now, in this case, we know that the circuit board is the problem because I put this old circuit board in here. But if you're getting this issue where you don't have enough power coming through, this is where you would want to check to make sure you have the 28 volts coming out of your, your transformer to go into your charging station circuit board to be able to put it back out. In a case like this, where you've already got everything apart, and you're looking at this, and you're saying, uh, oh, I've only got 20 volts. Well, instead of going back to your transformer and pulling all that stuff apart to check it, just unplug this plug right here. Because you've got your, your power coming in from your transformer here. And put this back up here again so you can see it. You've got a black wire, and you've got a red wire right here coming down. This is where it comes from your plug on the black on the back where your low voltage cable plugs in and it goes into this connector right here so all you got to do is take your multimeter and you're going to put the red probe on the red uh, terminal and the black one on the black terminal and see what you've got coming in there power wise from your transformer get on there right and you can see we got 28.2 volts coming in so everything coming in to the trans oops pop that one off there Everything coming in to the circuit board, through our low voltage cable, through our transformer, that is all good. So now your problem is definitely going to be in your circuit board. So again, 
check your voltage there. Make sure you've got the proper voltage coming out. Once you isolate it by checking the resistance in your boundary wire and you can say, okay, I don't have a break. I don't have high resistance in here. It's something within this. Then you've already got the wires off. Check your voltage coming out of there. That'd be the next logical step, right? Before you pull anything apart, just check your voltage coming out of there. If it's low voltage, then you can come in here and you can say, okay, do I have the voltage coming out of here to go into the charging station to supply these terminals with the right amount? Yes or no? If it's yes, you've got the right amount of voltage coming through here. This and your harness right here that go back to these terminals are the only things that are in there between this and your boundary wires. And 99.9% .9 of the time, this is going to be the problem. Unless you see that something got in here and just completely tore a wire apart or something to that extent. Um, you can also double check this by doing a resistance check, you know, simply by checking between the end of the plug here to the terminal in the back that the wire goes to and just make sure you've got, you've got um, a small amount of resistance there. You don't want anything over like one ohm going from that little short of a distance back through there and that's going to verify that your, cir uh, your circuit board is the problem. So um, that's the real easy way to diagnose uh, quite a few no loop signal errors right there, you know, right at this point. Now we showed you those other videos just to give you an idea of how everything works and what to look for but now you can see that this is a really easy process to figure out whether it's something with my boundary wire or if it's something with the charging station itself and then you can just work from here either out through your boundary wire or back through your power source coming into your charging station board. So we're going to throw another charging station board in here and show you how everything should be working, right? Well, let's see what happens. Okay, charging station board number three here, right? Got the flashing blue light, flashing LED. Um, so again, we're better off than we were originally where we had the solid green and we had no boundary wires connected, but still saying solid green. So we know we're moving in the right direction again. And this time we'll connect the boundary wires and we should get solid green, right? Plug the first one in, plug the second one in. There we go. Solid green, so we're ready to go, right? Well, now before you go and connect those wires, you might want to check that voltage on the back just to see, again, make sure everything's working properly. We, we have a pretty good idea if this one's going to work right because when we disconnect the boundary wire, we get flashing blue, right? So we know that system's working. When we connect that boundary wire, um, we get the solid green. Should be good to go, but we'll double check this just to be safe, see what it's putting out there. Let me try to get that up there in a spot where you guys can see that. Well, I reach around to the back here. Bear with me, bear with me here. All right, so there's our negative, there's our positive. We've got 26 and a half volts coming through there. That's okay. That's going to work. You're going to see times where you're going to be up there around 32 on some of these. 26, it's good. Um, this one will work. It will provide a signal. You might have more areas um, of weak signal because the voltage isn't as high as, as uh, you know, it might be with a brand new charging station board. This is another used one here I put in here. Um, so yeah, as long as you have at least a 26, you're, you're going to be able to get the mower to work. Anything less than that, you're running into some, some issues there. This gives you an idea though, if you do swap in a used board that, hey, this is gonna work, but I better place the order for that new one. I better go to www.roboticmowerservices.com and order me a new charging station board because I don't know how long this one's going to last. Now, we know this is going to work because it's got the voltage coming through here. It's got enough voltage coming through on the boundary wire system. And like I said, it turns green when we connect the boundary wire. So everything on this is good to go. There can't be any possible problems. We know that the boundary wire is good. Charging station board is good because we have the green light and we have the voltage coming through at the tabs where our boundary wire connects, right? Nope. Everything is not okay with this circuit board. And if you remember, I was saying about you can check the voltage coming out for your guide wires. 
this one here, you wouldn't notice a problem with this until the mower went back, went to come back from the, uh, the mowing area and it was trying to follow the guide wires. And it might say a certain guide wire might not be found, but in other cases, it might not give you any error. And on this one, if we check the voltage for our guide wires, pull our negative off there for the, uh, the system. So again, you want to put your, your negative probe on your right boundary wire terminal on the back of the charging station and then check the voltage coming out at your guide wire terminals. Here, guide wire two, that terminal, 4.6 volts. If we go over here to guide one, nothing. If we go to guide three, oh, I can pass this tag here. If we go to guide three, nothing again. So this circuit board, everything is going to show that it's working good for the boundary wire system, but two of your guides uh, are not going to have power coming out, so there'll be no signal from them. So guide two would be the only one working. So if you run into a guide wire problem where your guide wire is not working, now you know that it's the same thing as checking the voltage on your boundary wire system, and you can come back here and you can check to see um, you know, if you have the voltage coming through or not. If you don't have the voltage coming through, then you can go in here again, as I said, you can unplug this plug, do a quick continuity check between the terminal back here and where that wire plugs into this plug and see if you've got high resistance. If you do, it could be where the wire clips onto the terminal in the back. You can clean that up, see if that helps it. If not, then you know your charging station board is the issue. So hopefully that clears that up. If you guys are having these no loop signal errors and uh, you're running into these problems, you know now that you can come in here to, to the, uh, the charging station board after you check your wire, make sure that you don't have high resistance in your boundary wire. You know your boundary wire is good, then it's all gonna be in here. You come in here, you check for your power, uh, make sure you have the right amount of power coming in, and um, just go from there. You know, check your continuity of your wires, check the resistance in these wires, and you'll be able to rule out if it's anything with this harness or if it's the board itself, you know. That's going to be the easiest way to test the board is by testing everything else and saying, okay, we've eliminated everything else. It's got to be this because that's the only component left. Now, I was saying that this has, um, this has voltage coming out for the boundary wires in the high 26 volt range. And on some of them, you will see, you know, up in the 30s. Uh, give you an example. Here is a 115H charging station tower. Let me move the camera here so you get a better look at this. I'll show you on this 115H charging station tower here. Uh, same thing. You're going to check it on the back. Let me just move this. Around. All right, we got a 115H charging station tower here plugged in. It's going to be the same thing. One side is negative, one side is positive, and you're just going to check your voltage. You can see there we've got 33 volts coming through here. Just to show you what I was talking about earlier, if you hook your uh, or touch your probes the wrong way on here, it's just going to make it a negative reading. So there you can see it puts the negative sign in front of it. Just switch them around and you're good to go. So that's it. Um, you know, same process no matter which which model you have here, whether it's a, a 100 series like the 115H, uh, 300 series or a 400 series or a 500 series, and the guide wire, same thing. You want to have the 4.5 volts right around there for your guide wire with a 115H tower. 300 series would be the same as this where you're gonna have the 28 volts coming out and uh, you know the four and a half for your guide wire and you would check it the same way. With this, you know, if you got any kind of problem there, there's nothing in here to change around. You just replace this whole tower assembly and you're done. With this, you have a few more options of what you can check and what you can replace. That's why it's so crucial to know how to test this stuff and what to look for in there so you're not just throwing parts at it to try to get it to work again. Um, you can see this is a uh, this is a picture here from our 435X that's running right now, and uh, you can see again over 26 volts. So one with the the high 26 volts, it will work. This mower was working fine. We tried a couple of mowers on this charging station in this loop uh, that we had this charging station in before we made the small one, and it worked okay. Uh, just you might run a chance of getting into those areas where you have a weak signal, you know, in the big wide open areas. So as always, if you need any parts for your automower, whether it's for the charging station or the automower itself, or you were looking to buy an automower or you're looking to buy automower accessories, 
www.roboticmowerservices.com. That's our website. Go in there. If you can't find what you're looking for there, send us an email, roboticmowerservices at gmail.com, and just say, hey, here's what I'm looking for. I can't find it. You got it. Can you get it? And we'll try to take care of you the best we can. If you need tech support or anything like that for your automower, best thing to do is send us an email, roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them on this video or feel free to send us an email. You know, let us know what you might have issues with or if there's something with this that you didn't understand and we'll, we'll try to help you out. That's going to do it for this video here. As always, be sure to subscribe to this channel and thanks for watching.